Hello my beautiful badgers, Massacoda back again with another Asset Store video, this time a little bit different, I'm joined by a special guest, Stephen from Turn the Game On. You might remember him because he was on my Twitch stream, or the w.twitch.tv slash the Massacoda. We interviewed him about his arcade race, and this time we're doing a kind of co-tutorial introduction to the simple traffic system that's available on the Unity Asset Store. I really wanted to get my hands on this and play with it, and I don't like reading documentation. So I called him up and said, would you mind showing me how to play with your thing? And he said, sure, why not? And hopefully you're all going to enjoy it too. So sit back, relax, and I'll show you how to play with the simple traffic system. Hi everyone, I'm here back again with Stephen from Turn the Game On. You might remember him because he came on my live dev stream over on orderw.twitch.tv slash the messy coder. We had a live dev interview. Welcome back, Stephen from Turn the Game On, not Turn On the Game. Thank you. It's nice to be back. It's nice to have you back. So what have you been up to since, uh, since you last been on? I've, uh, I've actually been working on a few different projects. Um, probably the one that I've spent the most time on is the racing game, uh, that you're looking at right now. Oh, but yeah, we just happen to be looking at. That's, that's nice yeah. Thing. So th this is a project that um, I'm using with the Arcade Racer Racing Game Development Kit that I made. The one that we had on the live stream for those uh, who want to go and check it out. Yeah, so I, I use that as a base and pretty much I'm making an open world racing game. And... I guess specifically what we're talking about is some of the cool stuff that I've been doing with it. Um, so, so one of the things that I want to share is the traffic system that I set up. As soon as you said that, you came to some traffic. Yes. It's, it's like, like it was you, meant to be. Exactly. <laughs> so what, what is this traffic system of which you speak? So I'm working on an open world racing game as you see and we're we're kind of just driving around this huge GT open world stuff. landscape yeah it's not as big as i want it to be um but for the size that it is it's it's actually pretty big it's a lot bigger than just a small little scene or a small race course is that and, really in the background yes we have a ferris wheel up here oh nice I can actually, like, I should make this full screen so we can actually see a little bit better. It looks like some of the lighting has some issues. I'm not sure why the car is. Oh, I do think I know why the car looks so interestingly bright. There you go. That's, that's, that's the jink, messy jinx. Yeah, let's, let's mess with that reflection probe that needs to eventually just get turned off completely. There you go. Um, so yeah, so this is a large open world project, and as you can see, there's a lot of cars driving around, um, and that was basically what I've been working on at the beginning of this project, is just bringing the world to life so I can start to build a racing game in it, and the first thing that I noticed when building something this big is that I need a lot of cars. And I also didn't want the cars to be really expensive from a performance perspective because they're just background traffic. Um, so th these cars are on top of each other, but that is fixed. Whoa, I just need there to we actually... go. There you go. That's why. Yeah, he spawned in the air, but I, <laughs> I actually fixed that. I just haven't pushed all of the fixes to this project. I haven't worked on this project in about 30 days, actually. I've, I have too many projects. I know that feeling. So your, your, actual, so your traffic system is now more up-to-date than this project is? Yes, yes. I, I'm, I'm going to make a point probably this weekend to come back in and push the latest changes and just clean up some of the bugs. Um, yeah, it, it deserves it. I, I'm just being lazy because I've done it <laughs> like three times already. This is mad. When you're driving around, this is a massive city. Yeah, so we're using object pooling right now. And actually, so you've seen a lot of cars. There's only 75 cars active in the scene right now. Um, really? Yeah. I, 
they should not be popping on in front of you. And I think that that just might be their lights popping on. I don't know. There's a lot of settings that I think I was working on tweaking, but I haven't been in it for 30 days. So who knows what's working and what's not. <laughs> it's the mystery of, of, the, of the project. It's like whenever I sit down, I've coded anything. I, I put comments in just so I can remind myself what I was doing. Like here, I thought I fixed all of those, but there's still a, a street light in the street. Let's drive it and, <laughs> into it, knock it over. It doesn't deserve to be there. No, it's fixed. It's fixed. That's lovely. So we so can drive I've, through it now. So actually, it's like, yeah, <laughs> it's like it's not there. I'm looking forward to it when you do update this, so we can sit there and play with it together. Is you going to have it on the multiplayer over the network? Um. I don't know. Come on. I, I really don't know. So the, it like, costs me I've a lot of work... money to fly to America to sit down and play with you. I'll have to do it over the network. I've I got trees in the road. <laughs> I've um, I've been working on racing games for a very long time, and I I don't know what this project is going to end up being when it's finished. I I just don't know. Um, I'm not trying to rush it into completion. And what you're looking at is basically like two months worth of work. Wow, so, that's crazy. Um, and most of that time was just really building the landscape and optimizing the system so that I get good performance. We're seeing 70 frames in the editor. It actually runs higher in a build. Um, this is just two months. I mean, it takes me two months to write Hello World. So, but yeah, uh, practice makes perfect. I, yeah. I'd say see how many times you could... Write hello world and <laughs> projects, and try to, eventually try, you'll try to get it done quicker, faster. Exactly, it's good advice. I like it. So, so in that two months, I also took this traffic system and actually started working on creating an asset from it. Because, so I, I was sharing devlogs for this project, and people were asking for the traffic system, which I was not planning on sharing. Um, but I had about three or four people reach out to me through email and, and through comments. And they said they wanted to buy it. And I, I figured at that point I should probably just wrap it up into a package. And I did. And then as I was using it and other people were using it, I was getting some feedback. So I was creating some editor tools to improve the workflow. Anyway, long story short, through the process of working on this game, I ended up creating simple traffic system for the Unity Asset Store, which we're actually going to jump into a tutorial for. Yeah, it'd be awesome. So, so we, we've got the people who watched setup. your devlog to thank for us having this as an asset. Yes, yes. I was actually a, a little upset from my publisher experience over the last year, and that's why I started this racing game. Um, I was actually... I had a lot of people on the forum that were just kind of being rude and mean and I I did a lot of work for the Arcade Racer update, and and I, I gave the update for free to everybody who had purchased it. Um, but there were some people who were really loud, and they weren't happy with it. And I, I guess I, I was upset by that, but so I, I decided to not really focus on that project anymore because, obviously, I wasn't really being well-received, and... And people, I think my dog's starting to cry too. So if you're in the background, he's he's sleeping. Oh, the, the dog's listening oh. to your story and he's upset. I remember when you came on the stream. You were very um, open and honest uh, when you came on talking about it. Um, yeah, it was... and kind of like when one door closes, another door opens. So so that was the end of that project in the sense that like I had been working on it for four years and I finished a kit. Um, people just wanted one-click games. They didn't want to have to do any work. Like, and, and I think it was really one guy who was giving me the hardest time over the course of that year. Like When I went back and looked through the forum, I was like, what the heck? It's but, probably the same guy who's probably saying the same stuff to load of other assets as well. I'm yeah, every time, I, every time I publish a video, I get an instant dislike. So I'm pretty sure it's him. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, don't worry about that. It's, it's, you you can tr you can see that in mind as well. Every single video, there's a there's a disc like like within seconds of it going live. It's like, oh, I come on. At least at least you couldn't have you couldn't have watched five minutes of it because I've just yeah. uploaded it one minute ago. So 
It's like they subscribed just so they could get that notification and instant dislike. The the, the last laugh is on us because the algorithm doesn't care if it's a like or dislike. It just sees it as a plus one. Exactly. Interaction. Community engagement. So we get the last laugh because now he's actually contributed to your success in, in in a plus one in the you in the YouTube algorithm. But well, we're gonna go off on a on a tangent about how there's a lot of mean people who don't know how well, YouTube works. Well Well actually no, it has a happy ending. The happy ending is I I created this prototype that we're playing and a traffic system which we're about to jump into, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we like let, me, let, let me swap over to the actual asset store project. So we're in now your project of the simple traffic system from Turn the Game On, available on the Unity Asset Store, regular price. Hang on, let me just turn it into shackles on the Asset Store. Uh, $35 on the Unity Asset Store, regular price, unless you're getting it on a sale, in which case you're going to get it on a bargain. And everyone should always buy bargains in a sale when they can. Simple Traffic System is an easy-to-use traffic system with editor helper tools that allow for quick creation of waypoint-based routes that can be interconnected to create complex road networks in your scenes it says on the asset store is that correct that is correct i i think the main feature is actually that it uses job system and burst so you could just have great performance to me that's what i built it for um obviously that was the need that i had to satisfy when i built it and this is the demo um this is the pooling demo actually so this is version 1.0 and I have 1.0.6 nearly ready which will allow the cars to change lanes and their overall behavior is is much more improved compared to the behavior in this video like you'll see them come to some some harder stops and stuff but we we like the ability to change lanes yes I, I think it adds to like the dynamicness of the traffic it makes them seem less robotic like right now they're not changing lanes at all but 1.0.6, 1.0.6, you will have that lane change feature, and, and it'll, it'll just look and feel a lot better. What if you're heading towards a car? Would it try to change lane to get away from you, to avoid you? It will. Um, there are some settings. Um, so basically, it's going to wait two seconds. It, all of this stuff is running through like a, a more data-oriented logic loop so like all of these cars they don't have their own mono behavior that are doing their own logic they're all running in parallel so so that being said the code was kind of complex to write and put together and i'm building up the functionality as i go so the first thing i did was just make sure all of the cars worked and make sure i could create roads and and connect the roads pretty quickly um right now i'm actually starting to improve on all of the features of the system, which includes lane changing. And over time, I'd like to get some better obstacle avoidance. Um, I'm not sure how it's going to be. I actually, I haven't tested the lane changing in this with a player car. But if you've tried the arcade racer kit, the goal is to at least get to that point, which I think 1.0.6 does. And those change lanes and the obstacle avoid pretty well. but those are mono behavior driven, whereas this is using the job system. Um, so it's just a completely different logical approach when you're writing the code. And, and that's what gives you the ability to have like 6,000 cars in your, in your budget. Yes, yes. So like if you load up the demo build for the PC, um, you'll actually get like five or 600 frames per second with this demo scene. And it's using 400 cars almost, 358 cars. Dang. So, what's the most you wanna, pushed? Um, I I actually haven't tried to see what the limit was. I was like, hmm, I like seeing hundreds. I can't really see. I'm not personally going to use more than four hundred. So the more feedback I get from people and the more use cases that just that that's useful information for me to see what they're trying to do with it. I'm gonna have uh, to try and put five thousand. Yeah, I'm I'm curious what would happen, and I'm curious what kind of machine would be running it. So, like, the more cores you have on your processor, the more you can run. So oh, if I've you're got a potato. One, oh, 
Well, <laughs> potatoes work okay. How, how many can we throw at my potato? That's what I want to say. The other, the other interesting bit of functionality that I liked, always liked in GTA, when you're driving your car and you're beeping your horn or you're doing your siren, the cars move out of the way in, to let you pass. I don't know. Um, like, like, there's a lot. So you could of do like to force it to change lanes, so you can pass it. So, I, I think, I think it's not really too hard to program some of that behavior in, but but I'm not specifically focused on that. So, so a pro, like I provide the full source for this. So, if you understand the job system and you understand how to read the code. It's pretty cleanly written. And is it commented? You, it's not commented. Um, I'm, it's understand. still a work in progress. But and also, I don't really know that I I want anybody who contacts me and they're looking to work with it. If you ask me what you're looking to do, I'll help you do it. Um, I I feel like time I would spend writing comments for the code. I could be improving some of these systems, which is what I'm currently working on. This is the same conversation I've had. So many asset devs are like, if your code is understandable, it doesn't need to be commented. And that's how I feel. Like I've, I can't tell you. I've, I never read documentation for the asset store, assets that I purchase. I have so many scripting assets, and I just grab them and I look at the code. And when people write clean code, you can read it just like a book. You, you know, you have your start, awake update the unity callbacks that are built in and then you have other methods and when when methods are properly named and the variables are properly named you, you just know what it is like so like all of the variables in the system it's like let's say so you have a car transform array you have a car transform position array i'm going to have a comment next to that that says car transform <laughs> variable like like i actually get really frustrated when i'm when i buy code assets like so i'm working on another project right now where i used a, a template to build a top down game and i'm rewriting a lot of the code and it's so frustrating to go through those scripts and just see like initialize variables well like it's called initialization, obviously. <laughs> or you see private variables right above the private. Var obviously, they're private. They're prefixed with the private instead of public. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like it, if it's, if you, you understand, you're actually, you're actually describing my my code at the moment as well. Like, remember to put things here. There's, there's a lot of my comments as well. <laughs> like, this bit doesn't work. It should work. Why doesn't it work? That's a lot of my comments and that stuff. <laughs> I think everybody's at different skill levels and it, it's okay. Uh, personally, that's just the way I feel about code. Um, Although you're, but laying, yeah, you're yeah. laying the gauntlet down though and you're saying like, I'm going to have to sit and do now a load of other videos where I'm going to be trying to extend your traffic system. So... So for now, today, we're going to learn how you can use it out of the box, uh, get started, lay down some some road and put some cars in. Is that what we're going to do? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. If you wanted to extend it, I'd, I'd be happy to show you how you can start using it. Oh, we'll um, definitely do that later. So we have, that was the demo pooling scene. I have a duplicate of that scene set up that's empty. So in this scene, we... We don't have any of the logic. It's just an empty scene with some scene geometry. And you've named it after me. That's very sweet. I did. It's a messy tutorial. <laughs> so the first thing... I'm just going to jump in and get started. Do it. All right. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll select Tools, Simple Traffic System, AI Traffic Controller. This thing has to be in your scene. So Once right now, there's nothing works. Yeah. Only one of them. It's a singleton. I mean, just it, before, it, before, you, before you start, start, it's going to draw attention to one fact. So those who are sitting at home completely forget to do this. Always make sure that you go to the package manager and import in the actual burst and other required packages that you need in the project. Otherwise, it, you will get errors and you will get a smack on your bottom. Yeah, so if you check the readme, it's also in the package description, but you just open the package manager window... Uh, package manager. There it is. And you want to make sure you have 
first, collections, mathematics, and jobs. And just and to remind people that uh, if you're looking for someone, you can't find them, always click that to uh, show the, the um, preview packages because that's where you'll find the collections hiding. Yeah, I was actually looking for it for a couple minutes earlier. So, so yeah, we added our AI traffic controller, and this thing basically is is what's responsible for the jobs and and burst. What's um, that center point transform for? That's for pooling. So that's if you would assign your player car or your main camera if you set up traffic pooling, and it would create. It would basically pool around that center point. So, what we're going to get started with is just the basics. So, it, what this system is at the core is a waypoint route system. So, let's create a waypoint route. We'll select tools, simple traffic system, AI traffic waypoint route. You could also press Control Alt and R, which is pretty quick. Like once you're actually in the process of wiring up a full city like this, you'll want to use the hotkeys. Um, and in the inspector, you can see you can. It tells you exactly what to do. You press Alt and you left click in the scene view on the collider to add points to the route. So we have a route. It's this object here, and doesn't really have any options. You don't need to do anything with it. So let's let's follow its instructions. I'll alt and I'll left click, and you can see I'm placing some waypoints in the scene. And now I have a waypoint route. And as I left clicked, all of my points were generated. And each of these points have a box collider that's a trigger. So when the AI car collides with these waypoints, the on reach waypoint settings information is used. So we can set new route points. We we could basically hook these routes into each other to create any kind of network of routes. And we could also call an on-reach waypoint event. We could set the speed limit for the cars, which you absolutely should do, and we'll do a little bit of that. Um, once we have the route in the scene, all we need to do is drop in some spawn traffic vehicles. So I'll go into the prefabs folder. I'll take the... AI traffic car white, and I'll drop it in, and then I'll press play. So what this is going to do is just going to set this there he AI is. traffic car up, and he's going to drive on the route until he reaches the end of it, and then he'll stop. Cool, right? So we can also mess with some of these points. So like, say we want him to stop at waypoint 6. We will just Hit stop driving. So now he'll drive over to waypoint six and he will stop. And what's actually pretty cool about this system is we can do different things. So maybe we want to call an event when that happens. So I, I set up a debug test. So in your test script, you can write whatever logic you want. This is just a simple public method that will bring this onto the screen. That will hey. debug log the word test into the console. So let's go ahead and hook that up. We will call the debug test script test method. So now when the car hits waypoint six it will stop and then it will call that that debug message. There, and there it we is. Go. We, see, we see test. So you could hook up whatever logic you want. You could put some coroutines in here um, that are waiting for some player interaction and then particle when the player interacts, exploding. you could tell the car, yeah, you could, hey, particle effect, you, you arrived at your destination. Fun fact. Really? Da -da -da. Yeah, sound effects too. What, whatever you want, you could <laughs> throw some custom logic in. There. You could really create a lot of different. Like, it's really open ended by just having this ability. Um, but th this, so this is the core of the system, right? So the next thing that I'm going to show you is I will turn off stop driving, and I'm going to remove that waypoint. I'm just going to create one more waypoint route. 
control R. And I'll click a few times down the road. And I have this, well, I could show you the helper tools, but I think it's important to just see how the system works on a base level because everything is really about what these waypoint routes can do. Um, so if I select the last point of the first route and I assign a new route point, and I press play, now the car is going to drive to that next route instead of stopping. Which Hang is kind of cool. Let's see. Is it really going to do it? I made the, the road kind of long, so there's this anticipation building up. He did it. Oh, I did it. Da, cool. Da, da, da. Now Nasty needs to do the da, 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 event. <laughs> da, 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 event. <laughs> Ta-da. That's lovely. Poof the magic dragon. Exactly. So, it, um, it, so now you can actually have um, loads of different ones and just go, okay, now I'm going to link them together. Yes. And and the, there's also a traffic light system. So you can select tools, simple traffic system, AI traffic light manager. And what this is, is it, it's going to give you a, a traffic light and you have some cycles. So so you get this traffic light that it brought into the scene. You need to put a space between the word red and timer. That's really good. Between what? You've got green timer, yellow timer. A red time has got no space between the two words. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, there's a typo there. I did not even notice that. Thank you. <laughs> I will fix that for you, because now I'm going to be upset by that. If that's the only bug that we've got. We've oh, got man. It. And it's a typo, too. Like, that makes it worse. I know. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know what? if I can continue this video. One of my colleagues at work put a, a typo in an email that they sent, and... They did in with two ends, and I was like, you, I was like, you said coach who came so close to not doing any typos today, and then I did that on purpose to see if you'd catch it, and I'm like, oh, I don't know if that makes it better or worse. Oh, I thought you were going to say they shared it with the entire company and everybody was laughing at him. <laughs> they wouldn't mind, I don't think. You, so, when, you, when you looked at, um, you added that one um, extra route, that was an array, so you can you can have more than one? How Correct. does that work? So, so when it hits the new route, it'll the car will choose randomly. So let's actually drop some more. We'll, we'll do another route. Um, oh, wow. So it's like you ra randomly go, oh, now I'm going to just go down this route. Correct. Actually, clicked a few too many times. Let me move that one manually and... Move this one manually. So these are all game objects. You can move the points however you like. So now we have two routes that we could connect to. I will take that point 13 and add point 1 from this new route. So now I have two different routes that I can go to. I will... Increase the array size for the spawn traffic to five. So, <clears throat> excuse me, now I have five cars. Oh, wow. And one of them at least should take a different yeah. route compared to the other yeah, ones. I'm... So, yeah, it's just going to pick okay, the route. He's gone up. Randomly. He's gone down. Yeah. He's gone there down. Go. This one's going to go up. No, he went down. This one's going to go up. Yay. Not bad odds. And that's basically the idea of simple traffic system. And that's why I called it simple traffic system. Because it's, it's really just about creating waypoint routes that have waypoints that you can configure custom events, you can configure the speed limit for the cars, and you could set up new route points, right? So, And you, it, this doesn't have to be at the end of the route. This could be at any point in the route. You could set up a new route point, and it'll randomly pick it. That is great. So now what we want to do is we will go back to... Let's get out of play mode. We'll go back to this traffic light manager. So what this traffic light manager is, this is also an array. We currently have one traffic light assigned by default when it comes into the scene. And 
it's basically spawning it in World Space Center. So, so these objects, the idea with the traffic light is that you would take these and you would hook up your own traffic light prefab. So, so you would actually have the model for the traffic light and you would take these lights and you would set them up on your model and kind of put them in front of where your lights would go and use them as emission. So you would use like post-processing to get the emissive values. Right now they're just going to be colored. But, but you could see what I'm doing. I bring them into the scene and kind of you could do a better job at, at this than I am. So, so you, you would turn this traffic light manager into a prefab. You would wire up your traffic lights. Like let's say we wanted to have two sets of traffic lights, one on this one, one on this one. So since I duplicated it and I have two now, I'm going to assign this new one to element two's index. Actually, no, I did that wrong. I will increase the traffic lights here. The other elements are for other intersection, other sides of the intersection. So like these two traffic lights are for this, this set of the sequence. So if after this sequence plays, if you wanted to have another sequence of traffic lights for this lane, for example, you would increase the element size. And then if you wanted three, and you could check out the demo scene for a better configuration. Eventually I'll do a full tutorial where I wire up a complete city. But So now we have our AI traffic light manager. We only have one cycle in the sequence, which are these two lights. And they're going to be green for 15 seconds, yellow for three, and red for three. And each of these traffic lights needs to have a waypoint route assigned to it. So what we'll do is we will create one more route. This one will be a little shorter. And so for this traffic light, we want it to control, let's call this AI waypoint route one. And this one, no, not this one, this one will be AI Waypoint Route 2. So Traffic Light 1 is for AI Waypoint Route 1. Traffic Light 2 is for AI Waypoint Route 2. Pretty right. simple. Go back, go back to your Traffic Light Manager. Okay. Well, hang on, you need to put in your element one, you need to drag in the other one. You've got the same one. No, no. Um, so if... Hang on, if, your traffic lights down the bottom, the, your array. Go back to your traffic manager. There you go. Yeah, that's right. you got light one, light one. Oh, yeah, you're right. There you go. What would you do, what would you do without me? I, I would have wondered what happened when I first <laughs> played. It would not have been. It's like it would have would have would have gone out with a yeah. whimper instead of a bang. It would have been kind of sad. So are, I, I are you going to link that um, route then to the other one? Yeah, I'm. A, I'm actually going to remove the the second option that I added in the new ra waypoint route, so that the cars don't. Oh, yeah. Don't drive into each other. So. So AI waypoint route two, point number six, goes to this route. So now they're just going to drive through. But let's change the timer settings a little bit so we, we know that we're going to get a light. So we're going to make it green for only two seconds. That way we, we, the cars are guaranteed to stop. So are and they going to be green and red at the same time then? Yes. Because they're in the same array. And if you if you wanted them to be different, then you'd make two arrays. 
Right. Which would so like let's say that you had the left turn lane. Yeah. And you wanted that to to be to have a different timer, we could actually then we would create another array element and instead of AI traffic light one being in this array, we would move it to another array. We would basically just separate them and then they would be on their own sequence settings. So and you, you could create more you... traffic you could create more traffic light managers too. How would you change of when it starts the green? Well, they all, do they all start the green at the same time? It's just that some of the might, green might only last two seconds and another green might last five seconds. Um, and then eventually they'll be out of sync. I don't... Wait, so can you rephrase that one more time? So like now, put like you click play on the, on the start and you've got two arrays of two sets of traffic lights. So you don't want the traffic lights that are on this lane to be green at the same time as the traffic lights on the other lane to be green. You're talking about the ones like this, like over here? Yeah, so imagine that you've got these guys here have to wait. These will be red while the ones on the, on the opposite side of the street will be green. Well, let's set it up. So we'll do Control-R to create another route. Points. We've gone off on a tangent of what we were going to play about with, but I'm very excited by this. We're kind of learning the basics here. Like, there's some really powerful tools that I've developed um, to make this quicker. So what I just did was I created an intersection route. Uh, you're going to want to name your routes because you're going to have a lot of them I and put imagine. them in an organization that makes sense for you. So. So this one will be intersection, and just like the other one, we're going to assign the new route point. I'm going to go ahead and lock this inspector, click on this waypoint, and drag it in. We can see we got the gizmo line that's indicating that it's properly set up. Now, you know you're going to hate me. I'm going to say, like, have you thought of adding a, if we click, on, click on one waypoint, click on another one, and then auto-link them together? But oh, you know that's already existing. Um, let me actually, so let me do that. So I'm going to, I can show you that window. I, so I didn't want to show you the, the editor tools before I showed you how the system works because I, I feel like it's really important to know the fundamentals. So let's go to Tools, Simple Traffic System, Route Connector Window. It's just a simple window. So there's a, a lot of tools in this package that are used to to make the fishing through waypoint routes. Like, it's not something that you need to do. But all of these tools, I want to rewrite them into a single unified editor window. This is the route connector window. If, in the future, every tool will be in the same window and you would just go into different modes. So with the route connector window, what we do is just press the button, load routes, and we get these editor handles. They have an F and a T, so we'll select the route point that we want to go from. So we're going from this point, and then T is 2, and then we'll connect route points, and you can see that the line is actually set up automatically. Just like magic. Just like magic. And I didn't know this was here. It just happened to time into it perfectly and there we go so now no one will believe me as well yeah I know they're not going to believe you <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that I don't really I don't push it forward just like I said because I, I don't think that it's really ready um, and I, I want to really improve these windows but anyway what, once you've connected it you can just unload the route and close the window um, so now at this point let's go ahead and toss some cars in here. Where do we want to go? We want... Oh, we still have the inspector locked. Let's go ahead and drop some cars in there and press play. So now what's going to happen is we have an intersection and those guys are stopping red, but these guys aren't stopping. Yeah, they just keep, they just keep on driving. And, and now they're going to crash into each other. This is crazy. No, there wasn't enough traffic. 
But what we can do here is we can say we want the green light here to be longer and now we want to set up another light over here. So what we would do, again, um, since this traffic light manager is already kind of in place, I'm just going to duplicate it, Control-D, and I'm going to remove the second light from it because it only has one. Change that array size back to one. And for the AI waypoint route, I'm going to assign the new waypoint route. So now it's the new traffic light that I just duplicated is assigned here. Oh, I, I, and I did that wrong. I did that wrong. What Sorry. Did I did it wrong. I didn't need to duplicate it. I know, because you can just make another one yeah. in the array at the top. Yeah. That's what happens when I'm working on like three projects at once. Um, I don't become an expert at any one particular project. So I'll duplicate this, and now I got light set number three. You were supposed to catch me on that. I know. I was thinking, but he does. He doesn't need to do that. But he, know, he must know what he's doing. I'm going to let him. I that. I never know what I'm doing. <laughs> that, that, that's the secret. That's so, like, I've been I've been trying to get away with that for for two years now. Okay, so now, element one has AI traffic light one and two. Element two has AI traffic three. So I now they're going to start at the same time. Now, not, no, they're going to be in a sequence because only element, only one of these elements plays at a time, <gasps> so they play in sequence. Oh, that's so clever. So, so first, element zero will play because it just goes in sequential order, and once. This sequence finishes the five seconds for green, three yellow, three red. It'll go on. It, it'll wait for, I think, three seconds or two seconds in between. And, um, and then it'll come back to this one and do five green, three yellow, oh, three red. I've got a problem now, though. So. Um, oh, no. So do I. <gasps> Something, something's wrong. We found a bug. <laughs> I think I, I did not configure something properly. Yeah, what didn't you configure? Oh, yeah, see? There you go. I didn't assign the route. You gotta assign the right route. You got it. That's the second time oh. you've done that. Yeah. It's like I'm tired or something. <laughs> So now we can see this light it's is red. red. It's red. While, the, while this one's green and yellow. So this now one switches to red. red. This one waits a couple seconds, turns green. Now we can go. Now we can go. Just like magic. And then we could adjust the timers however we want, and we could add more lights, and they could be in sequence. And if we wanted lights to be out of sequence, and I think that's why I created another traffic light manager. Mm. Like if we want something still in this intersection but out of sequence of the cycle, you would just create another traffic light manager yeah. for that. What I've typically been doing is creating a traffic light manager for each intersection, but I can see scenarios where you would want to have multiple traffic light managers at some intersections. Yeah, like the um the straight ahead is green for sixty seconds, but the right turn is only green for um, 14, like 20 seconds or something like that. Exactly. And sometimes you might want like a, it, it, actually, I'm just going to say the exact same thing you said, but just in a different way. So yeah, the, <laughs> just different timings for different purposes. That's, so yeah, now this you want to so see, this was so easy. You like want to see just some of this. the advanced tools? Yeah, because this was like, oh, this was ridiculously easy to do. So we just went to kindergarten. Yeah. Now we're we're going to go to grade school now. It was so simple. What's the name of this asset? Simple traffic system. There you go. And it lived up to it. So I'm starting to get a big hierarchy, so I'm going to organize it. I'm going to create... I'm 
this is how I organize mine. So waypoint route. All the routes that are not intersections, I'll put in waypoint routes. And then I'll create another object to hold the intersections. Well, actually, I don't know if we're going to create any more intersections. Um, but that's how I kind of organize it. And if I create multiple traffic light managers, I'll, I'll definitely create an object for that too. But the point is, when you're creating all of these routes, just try to be organized. Try to name them if you need to, but there are a lot of editor tools. Um, the city that I built in the racing game, we did not, like, I didn't need to name the routes any specific name to set up that road network. And I actually, with all of the tools that I'm about to show you, I was able to set up that city's road network in about a day and a half. That, which is that entire good. one? That massive yes. city? Yes, yes. And I think I can actually do it faster now that I'm a little bit more familiar with the tools and I've iterated on them a bit. I was going to say that probably a lot of that time was you just making sure everything was neatly organized. Yeah, like, so, like I said, I spent two months on that racing project and I also built this asset in those two months. So. Stop showing off, Steve. Um. Well, my <laughs> point is, like, I'm just kind of all over the place. I have, I, I'm not really an expert in any one area, which is why I fumble through, like, the tutorial. Oh, yeah, I, I assigned the wrong one because you know, I haven't done it enough times. I've really just tried to make sure that it works the way that it does. And, uh, yeah, so let's let's go ahead and do tools, simple traffic system, route creator this time. Do you know what I'm going to do when I'm doing my... I'm going to name all of the roads, and I'm going to name my waypoints and, and, the, and the routes by the names of the roads. So it'd be like Kentucky Street. Yes. I, I would strongly recommend that. So in the Arcade Racer Kit, I had names for all of these roads. If I were to rebuild that road network, now that all of those roads have names, I would rename all of the roads, the AI traffic routes, to have the same name as the road. And it could be useful for some type of, like, like you, anybody can build up from this system. Like if you have the, the programming competency, it's all open source. And you could grab it and you could... You could extend it to do whatever you want. Unlike really. some other assets that close it down as a DLL and charge you three times the price. Well, you know, I bought those too, and I experienced that, and that's kind of what inspired me to make this many years ago. Um, I, I, that's why I write my own tools, because I, I had such a poor experience with DLLs. You want to do something, and then you can't. <laughs> like, nope, it's a DLL. you got to co contact the publisher. And it takes days for a response or something, yeah. So, now we're looking at the AI Traffic Waypoint Route Creator. And what this is, this is a spline tool. It's an object that gets loaded in the scene. You delete it from your scene when you're done with it. You only use it at the time that you're creating the route. So, you can't really use it to edit the route after it's been created. In the future, if if I continue to iterate on this project, what I would like to do is have waypoint routes themselves be spline-based. Um, but that's not there yet. Anyway, so, <laughs> so here we go. We'll hit Start New. And I guess we didn't need to do that because we are on a fresh route, but it works the same way as the waypoint routes. So... This tool creates a spline and generates AI traffic waypoint routes with waypoints. Changing inspector settings will regenerate the route. Delete this object when you are done generating the route. And so that, that's basically the instructions. And then you alt and left click in the scene view to spawn points. And same as the waypoint route. And then you alt control and left click to insert a point. Um, so let me go ahead and alt left click down this yellow line. Okay. So now the two red spheres at the end are the control points. So so by moving this, it updates 
the angle um, that the route opens or closes with. So then you could grab all of these points and just kind of make sure they're centered. And now I will select the number of lanes that I want, up to 10. If, if you are using this asset and you want more, let me know. I don't think that people are going to make... More than 10? Out. Yeah. I mean, maybe they might. It, oh, okay. it uses jobs and bursts, so who knows what people are going to do with that power. I will set 4, and I'll hit Refresh. And what that does is it updates the editor, and it gives me four routes. Notice they were all spawned in the scene. And here I, I already know the values because I've worked on this road before. So we're setting the offset for each route. So we'll do eight and three, negative three, negative eight on the x-axis. It is almost like you've done this before. And I'll hit refresh. And here we go. Oh, how comes the last two? Um, I think, you know what? I think that's a bug that I fixed in the latest version, and I haven't put it in. That's interesting. Um, let's adjust the waypoint frequency. I think that's what it has to do with as well. So it's a mixture. So like if we have, because it's all percentage-based, um, let's reduce the frequency to 0 0.05. So we'll get more route points. Oh, we added another one. Yeah. Yeah, I, I fixed this bug in, in the latest version that's not published yet. But anyway, let's let's just work with it for right now. Why aren't you going all the way? I guess that's because I didn't fix the bug here. <laughs> so so anyway, I adjust the spline points and I eventually get the the shape that I need. And now at this point, um, I'm done with the tool. I, I have waypoint routes in the road. I can delete the route creator, and I could take these routes, and I could press reverse waypoint route, reverse waypoint route. So now they're facing the right way. So this was like as though you manually drew those like you did in the last three seconds ago. You did one line by itself. But you did one line down the middle, and then it automatically created you the lanes. Correct. So that speeds up your workflow tremendously. Yes, and this is why I was able to wire up that city so quickly. And then just put a bunch of prefabs in there and press play, and, and you there you go. So now we can... Now I deleted it from the scene, but I can bring it back pretty quickly. Route creator. Yeah, I need to get that update out. Can you make it so that randomly there's a really angry driver. Um, in the next version with lane changing, it's it's closer to being possible. Oh, um, nice. But no, that's not really, like, there's not a whole lot of vehicle customization, like, for the behavior that it, that's possible, but... But like I said, it is open source, so... I'm tempted to because if you know that kind I, of person who's always tailgating people, or the other one who like always keeps changing lanes just so he can overtake people. In the next version, what I put is like every um, every car has their own speed limit, so you can have those people that are tailgating. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, I gotta I gotta get that. Change your waypoint frequency. Uh, that'll help a little bit, yeah. I'm kind of embarrassed to show this because uh, it should be. I I've been used to working on that updated version that I <laughs> that everybody else does not have yet. So, <laughs> um, okay. So now now we have that set up, and we will open the route connector window again. We'll load the routes in. And get those from and to handles. From and to. 
And this is really what you're doing. You're just like loading these scene view tools and connecting the rods. Oop, I, I did the wrong one. And I actually need to, to set up some undo. So that does not... Uh, so notice these routes are not facing the right way. Yeah, you didn't reverse them, did you? And I did from the wrong route to the wrong route. So, so until that functionality is built in... You need to find the, the link that you made and delete it? Uh, yeah, which is... Since we started with that easy tutorial, we, we know that all we're doing with this is setting new route points. That, that's all this yeah. editor tool is doing. So we just delete that array element and move on. So let's reverse these waypoints. And then do from on these. And connect them. And connect them. And now... I guess uh, put some prefabs in here. And press play. They're driving. They're, They're driving. driving. Yeah, so you could get really creative. Um, the idea was like try to build it in a way that like Legos are made, so that it's <laughs> just modular and like you any way that you want to hook them up, you can hook them up. And yeah, that's that's about it. So we can look at customizing a car model, but I I don't think that's very hard. And I do a tutorial for that. Yeah, I think, I think we've I think this is enough for this for. For us to play about with and to get a, stop, stop putting together some roads on um, some traffic on our roads in, in a project. Uh, that is really, it really is simple. I actually shocked. You can you can tell that I'm a little bit flabbergasted that it really is simple. When people say simple, sometimes they don't really mean it. I I think I did that on purpose, <laughs> but also when I released this tool, none of the editor tools were available. So like. The initial workflow that we used, that's all it was. We You had waypoints that went on waypoint routes, and you manu manually clicked in the scene to create the waypoints, which in that case, it would take a couple days to wire up the city, which is what led to the creation of the editor tools. Well, and now just need, I believe that iteration is the key. Yeah, exactly. So this is, this is probably the fourth version of this asset. And in this fourth version, I've iterated the most because I feel like the asset finally got to a really solid foundation, whereas like I have these modular waypoint routes and these modular cars and it's using jobs and burst and let's just say the fourth version. When the and when did you start again, just to remind people? Oh so so five years ago I made an asset called the racing game template. And I, I used Unity standard assets to create that kit. And the AI was horrible. So as I started, as, as I finished that asset and made the, the arcade racer racing game development kit, which was the remake of the racing game template, I, I started build. So one of the things that I didn't show you is like how these um, cars work. They have these volume sensor gizmos and it's actually more impressive in the latest version because they have side sensor gizmos too um but see they have these volume sensors which is different most card assets what they do is they have ray casts and a ray can like go through things whereas this volume sensor like it, it hits that card no matter what it's going to hit that car and i could change the size of these sensors on the controller so like let's say i want to make them Narrower, wider, we can do that, and and, and that, that, that you could put well, like a, a bike because a bike can fit through a smaller space, so his sensor would be smaller. Exactly, and this was the first 
step in creating the system. So first I created a raycast system that allowed me to put the ra the rays on the car and like point them in the angle that I wanted them to go. And then I I I realized raycasts weren't working, so I I started experimenting with box casts. And that's what you're looking at. You're looking at a visualization of of the box cast and we could adjust the sensor length to make them longer or shorter. I think they get set at startup, so um, they're all in a, in a native array right now, so I can't increase the sensor length at runtime, but um, yeah, once I had the volume sensors working, I, I extended that to create side sensors, which are, all of this is an arcade racer. Um, and the side sensors are used just like the volume sensors front sensor like it, it detects the car, it knows the distance to the car that's in front of it, but the side sensors are used so you know if there's a car on the right or left of you, and if there's a car in front of you, you know that you could, if there's a car in front of you, like this car, let's see, this car in the back, there's a car in front of him. If his right side sensor is empty, then he knows he can change into the right lane. Really simple, but I had to build up all of this functionality and just get it working. And then once it was all working, it was all mono behavior based. So then I had to rewrite it all for jobs, which to me was the important part. And that's why I rewrote the system. That's why the system exists, because of the performance need of an open world game. So, And just to remind people, when you're using the advanced, the, the arcade racer, which doesn't use the job system, you, you, how many was like the most cars you could get away with? So that that PC demo used a hundred cars. This PC demo and and I was pushing it. Yeah, that was that was like the ceiling. You couldn't go much farther than that because it's all on the main thread. This one uses the demo uses four hundred cars, and I'm running at like hundreds of frames per second in the editor. And if you do a an IL two CPP build, you're going to be like 500 frames if you got a decent processor from like within the last few years or something. And we're talking about trying to see what happens when you throw 5,000 cars in it. I'd really be interested to see what you can do with it and how far you can push it. Like it, if you put LODs on stuff and you like call the wheels, you, you can really push it far. I'd like to also like see where jobs and burst go in the future. Um, like you can only put so many different data types into a C sharp job because they need to be struct struct type data that's like basically variables that cannot be null. So you can't pass in things like rigid bodies to be processed. Um, that being said, there there might be a, a future version where it gets iterated on again and it takes the performance like to a whole other level. But Right right now, I just kind of got off the groundwork. I got the basic system working. I got all of the editor tools working. Uh, the next version, we get the lane changing working, which brings it like all of the features up to par with the arcade racer kit. The, each car can have its own speed limit. And, and then we could build up functionality from there. Um, oh, that's very and, at, and at that point, like when, it, when it's fully, fully built up, I can look at that full feature set that's running in jobs, and I could see how to to take the next iteration step. It sounds like you're very excited about this project. Um, yeah, I've been working on it for years. I I really like programming, and working with AI is fun. And w when you get to the point where you've played with a simulation so long, and you see it take these like huge leaps in in terms of what it's capable of and it's allowing me to create my game um, I'm in, I'm excited to use it that's what I'm most excited about it's nice I'm to hear because also... when you when you came on for the interview you like lost I lost all my energy and motivation and you wanted to take a step back work on your game rather than the asset store just to be in yourself again yeah, I, th I think sometimes as just a person, you lose touch with what you're doing sometimes, and 
I, I think all of us are guilty of this. Sometimes we don't know when to quit. Like, it, there's that term, don't beat a dead horse. Yeah. Like, I, I was working on that racing kit for five years. That, that That's a long time. I needed to move on. I probably needed to move on a long time ago. But that also led to this, which which I really enjoy, and it's been pretty well received, which makes me happy, too. Um, it's like being in a relationship. You're in a, you know, it got a little bit abusive towards the end, and then you had to... Yeah. You had to leave. <laughs> I think we need to go our separate yeah. ways. And, and now you're both better for it. You're better people. Well, I am. I <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if the other half is. I'm sure, I'm sure they're fine. They're fine. <laughs> they're doing well. They've got, and they've got a nice neighbor who's who's moved in called the uh, Simple Traffic System. Yes, yes. And we'll see if they buy it or if they just want to dislike the videos. <laughs> Oh, if as really I was making this, me. every tutorial I made for this got an instant dislike. <laughs> really? Yeah. That, that angry Viva still out there. He is giving you a plus one on the on the on the algorithm though, so it's all good. Yeah, it's I don't mind. Fun. It made my skin thicker. Well, let, let's see what he does with this video when it goes live. <laughs> oh, you're gonna get dislikes too now. <laughs> oh, no, I, I've, been, I've been getting them for years. At least I haven't got any death threats yet. So yeah. Yet. Yeah, I, uh, that was a that was a nice awakening into uh, into social media. How everyone seems to become uh, very brave when they're sitting in front of their PCs. Until they realize somebody could get their IP address with just like a few searches. <laughs> well, the, the, I had one guy who was sending me very abusive threats who um, gave me his full postal address and his and his real name. So, which is a genius move on their part. Um, <laughs> And it's just, it really does make you have faith in humanity. I imagine that you get quite a lot more I get, hate I, than I, I do. I get, I think I get more than, than any, I, think, I don't, can't imagine Rackus getting any hate mail, but I, I, I get a lot, especially from Well, no, he doesn't publisher. charge it for anything, and usually the stuff that he advertises is free, so. There you go. Well, nice I, haven't start, I haven't started charging yet, I'm going to, don't worry about that. <laughs> It's, it's the it's I, the I, reviews that I do that on the assets that um I haven't done a negative one a really negative one in the in a long time. I'm looking forward to looking at some really bad assets and uh, putting those reviews alive because that's going to be exciting. Luckily for you, you don't have that problem with this simple traffic system because I'm very excited about playing with this. Well, thank you. I I hope you enjoy it and I hope you create some cool stuff with it. Me too. And, if you have any questions or suggestions, definitely let me know. Oh, I'm You're very active, active on the Unity forum. I was about so. to say, you are very active. Yeah. Um, I, I try to listen to the feedback. Some of it I may not do because I, I don't think that it aligns with the direction that I'm going currently. Like, I want this system to be as good as it can be, and I'm not looking to do integrations or anything at this point. With other assets, I'm I'm just trying to continue to improve it. So any feedback, I'll I'll definitely be open to it. Well, just to say that you know it, this is not a um, you know closed off DLL. It is it will get all the source code. So if you wanted to do an integration, then a lot of people out there can actually do them themselves. Yeah, yeah. And I think the the alternative, like the cheapest traffic system, I don't think that like I really priced it at a point where. I, I don't think any of the competitors are as simple to use, and I don't think that you can get as much mileage from them. And so, so basically, you need to use ITS, which is a lot more expensive if you want to have like pedestrians. And I don't know how much better that is than than this. And then there's the urban traffic system, which is like five hundred bucks. Oh man! And I, I've actually yeah. used that. One of the guys that I work with bought it for his app and and i used it to set up his app and i don't know it, it wasn't it's very, 500 it's, bucks I, it's, it's a very polite way of, of review uh, i don't know I was gonna lie. there's a lot there's a lot of cheaper ones out there like, you know like the eight buck assets and and stuff and there's expensive ones out there but there's a difference between having the burst system pooling and easy to use and the flexibility so yeah like i might not have all of the features that they have yet um 
but but I think that I I priced it very competitively, and I will be raising the price eventually. So, and if you do happen to get it on a sale, then you're even luckier as well. Yeah, and I'm really lucky because I got gifted a copy. Thank you very much for my free gift. I really do appreciate that. You are welcome very much. I I definitely hope you make some cool stuff, I and mean, you got to show me what you make too. I will do. I will show you mine. You show me yours. So it's only fair. Yes, it is yes. only fair. Um, you owe I'm, me now. <laughs> I'm just looking down at my PC case because uh, people remember like, watching the live stream that I did on the weekend. Um, my computer kept freezing; hasn't frozen while making this video. It's fantastic because uh, the thing, the fan on the on the graphics card is working again. And I've just looked at my PC that's laying in the ground, and my children have must have snuck into my office because they've covered it in stickers. Which Ooh. Is, Always nice. It's like uh, there. Eminem said that his kids did that to one of his cars in one of his videos. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm I remember sure, that. I'm sure Eminem's kids got a lot more money to spend than uh, on stickers. So that'd be that's fine. <laughs> Good. Although well, my my kids have got the chocolate Eminems, and that's even better. Mmm, chocolate. <laughs> I think all Eminems are chocolate. There you go. Except. M&M, but he's, <laughs> he's not an M&M's. No, he's, I'm sure he's tasty and, and, and tasty <laughs> as well in his own special way. Talking about special things, um, if anyone's wanting to get hold of the uh, special asset that is the Simple Traffic System, it's over on the Unity Asset Store. Check it out now. If you can get it while it's on the sale, you are a lucky badger. And if you're going to get it now, um, also look forward to updates that are coming very soon from a student from Turn the Game on. Thank you, buddy. Thanks for popping in. Really do appreciate you taking your time out to show us how you use the simple traffic system. And even better, there's a load of tutorials on YouTube that you can catch if you go over to Stephen's channel on the YouTube. I'll put a link to this in the description down below. Well, thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure. All right, buddy. I'm going to um, play out of your thing, and I will catch you another time. Bye, Bob. Great. Thanks for having me again. Bye. If you want to see more of my crazy videos, click on the left side of your screen now. And down below, there's that big juicy subscribe button. And right next to it is the magic bell that if you click it, it will tell you if I've got a new video coming out. Till next time.